so Marco, it's great to have you here. I was just wanting to talk to you for some of our students who are interested in running ads on Instagram. I think there's a huge block of people when it comes to running ads because it's when people start having to like financially put themselves out there and we kind of want to make sure that we optimize this process as much as possible in order to like guarantee some, some better results for, than usual. So that's why I was really excited to talk to you and happy to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And yeah, like you say, that's uh, very important. It's a very great way to grow, you know, using ads, but it's also, you know, you can, a lot of people can lose money if they don't do it correctly. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. So um, I think a lot of questions we do get from our students in regards to ads would be like the best way to find the audience that you target with your ads. Because I guess if you don't get this right, the money's kind of just going down the drain, going to the wrong people. So what are tips and tricks and kind of things that you've done for successful ad campaigns? Yeah, so basically the first thing that I actually go and do is I use Facebook audience insights. I don't know if uh, you guys have gone for that, but uh, I go to Facebook audience insight and I just put like related terms and maybe the, if I have a Facebook page, I actually just analyze uh, those people and then Facebook insights actually gives me, um, you know, related content or related pages that people might like. So that's the first thing I do. I also do some Google search, you know, related search. So for example, in my niche, which is entrepreneurship, you know, when I want to uh, target someone that's on my niche that, for example, likes Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, because yeah. he's an entrepreneur, then I go and just type Gary Vaynerchuk. And then on Google, it just gives me like a list of related, you know, people like Gary Vaynerchuk. You know? Yeah. Like people also search for kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So the related search on Google is also very, very useful. And, you know, also it's very important to you competitor and influencer research on Instagram. You know? So go for like the big guys on Instagram and try to see if you can find them inside your Facebook target as well. And yeah, I guess like mostly just be creative, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good start. Um, and I think some of the worry is that people can actually pour a lot of money into ads for Instagram. Is there necessarily a correlation between the more money you spend on ads and better results? Uh, so, or is there some kind of like sweet balancing spot that you recommend our students look into? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't th really think there's a correlation between these two. Uh, I actually like Facebook ads and well, Instagram ads in this case, just because you can really start testing with a really small budget, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't really, I never really tell anyone to go full on and start with hundred dollars a day, you know? Uh, maybe I start with a, a test phase, which is like 24 to 48 hours, where I actually like to do different A-B testing. You know, maybe I will do like two to even five different advances, and then I'll just analyze them for 24 to 48 hours to see which ones are working, which ones are not. And then I just go and turn up the ones that are like not performing the best, and the best performing ads, I just leave them on. And then if I want to increase the budget, instead of going and increase it, because that's not good, don't increase just the budget, like I actually go and duplicate it, you know? If you want to increase it, you can increase it only 20%, you know, but no more. <laughs> yeah, so then you just, it's better to just duplicate and start again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just with the winning ads. That's like what I do. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I can see how that works. So you just get rid of the ones that aren't working? Like, yeah. so you kind of do a test phase early on? And then exactly. you can work out, work out what you want to do. Okay, well, that's cool. So once you've done your test phase and you look into the metrics and the analytics that come from the ads that you've been running, what is it <laughs> you look for when you're looking at further optimizing your ads? Yeah, so for that one, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I actually just look at the cost per, res per result. You know, so uh, for example, in growth ads, when you're sending them to your page, I just want to see how many people are actually uh, clicking my, my ad and yeah. how much it's costing me each one of these people, right? And yeah, so I, I look at that and also at the frequency. So uh, also you, you need to look at the frequency because when you start running ads and a lot of people start seeing it more than two or three times in a row, you know, people might just get tired of it. So I uh, always look at the frequency that doesn't go more than three, you know? Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good hint. Because, yeah, no, I think I've done it myself when I've been scrolling through Instagram and I see an ad over and over again. Instead of convincing me more, it just gets me a little more, like, with it. Yeah. So I don't want you to use. <laughs> if it's a retargeting app, it's going to be, uh, obviously, you're going to have more frequency, but if it's just like one app for growth, I think uh, the frequency should be slower. You know? Yeah. 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 
Okay, that's good. So um, when it comes to different ads on the Instagram app, what we have covered is that there's different types. So you've got your in-story ads, you have your ads in, in the feed, and you also have boosted posts. So is there a spot for all three of them? Should you pick one if you're in a specific niche or what's the, what's the best way to tackle all of these and what's your professional opinion on which kind of ad works best on the Instagram platform? Yeah, so first, between a boosted ad, boosted posts and ads, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I believe that boosted posts is a waste of money. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it's a waste of money. You know, the targeting is not that great. You know, I think it's just Facebook or Instagram is just kind of putting it there. You know, for uh, business owners that don't know much and just to get just started into this uh, Facebook ads world, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really work as much. You know, you're not gonna get that many great results so uh what you really want to focus on is actual ads and you can have feed and story ads and typically the story ads perform way way better you know they always outperform the, the feed ads yeah because i guess they take up the full screen as well and people are in the process of watching it and absorbing it so you think that has something to do with it yeah yeah, yeah exactly I, I think that's one of the biggest things like it takes the whole screen and it's super uh engaging you know, like you have to actually scroll up, you know, it's actually fun to do it, you know, to like go <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit more interactive. Yeah, yeah, um, way more interactive. Uh, yeah, the only limitant there is like uh, you only have 15 seconds, but uh, you can use like a carousel app, you know, so you can have like different uh, 15 second ads for story ads. Like, yeah, so it's right through. Is there, a, like when you're making story ads, is there a specific program that you use? Do you like to like use a video editor and make it really exciting or sometimes you find just photos work fine? Uh, so what kind of content works better for that? Yeah. Videos actually work better, you know? Uh, and all the campaigns that are around videos always outperform uh, images. And <clears throat> one of the, it's, it's funny, but the ones that have worked the best for me and for the campaigns that I run is when I, when me or my client is talking to the camera, you know, either a selfie, you know, either oh, a selfie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because I guess like people don't, well, people see it as more, you know, personal and not much of an ad. So, yeah. you know, when you're just talking and like, hey, you know, like, you, like for example, myself, like you want to learn about like Instagram marketing and this stuff, so I pop now, you know, and all I put is just like, you know, even the, the GIFs that Instagram does, you know, those animated things to swipe up. Yeah. That, you know? Because so, it kind of, it sneaks in, I guess, if you do it that way, because when people are looking at stories of your friends, they're talking to the camera and if sometimes when ads come up, people kind of block, block that out. But if you try and sneak in with just like a casual using the gifts that are provided, I guess that's, that's where the success rate comes in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, also video reels work uh, really great, but this is like you say, it's like, a, I guess like a hack, you know, like yeah. a, <laughs> don't really realize they're seeing an ad. <laughs> yeah. He didn't see this coming. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, yeah. And as for feed ads, I guess they, I mean, they are worth investing in, but I think if you're trying to channel one, you're saying that stories are the best way to go? Yeah, yeah. I will honestly just focus on stories because that will give you, like, the best results talking about, like, money-wise. Mm -hmm. So there's, like, also another strategy that you could do is, like, run a feed ad, you know, because it can be longer. It can be all to one minute. Uh, and then just run ads to the people that watch that video, you know? So oh, even yeah. Ads, but yeah. Th then you run the story ads to people that watch that video and you, your conversions are going to like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Your conversions are going to go to the roof. <laughs> you really get them again. You're like, I'm back. <laughs> swipe, yeah. this, swipe up this time. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so when it comes to running ads, do you find that there's a time of day that's more effective that you try and target, or is it all really coming down to the audience that you're targeting? Uh, no, you know, this really depends on your niche and your audience. So uh, it, it really depends. You know, yeah. your local business, you know, in North America is not going to be the same as your local business in Australia or something like that, right? So it's just, yeah, you got to analyze your audience and see when. Yes, yeah, so when it works. And I guess that comes from running in those 24 to 48 hour windows you were talking about of like testing things, seeing if there is specifically a difference if you put more focus in one area, um, especially times of day and all that kind of thing. So some of the questions that we've had people write in um, is, is there a specific wrong way to set up an ad? Like what are pe mistakes people make? Do you have 
Do you have any suggestions on that? Uh, yeah, I guess I use like general uh, suggestions. So I, uh, I think like just follow the policies, you know, because right now, especially right now, Facebook is being super, super, you know, super active with that. They're blocking a lot of accounts. They don't want you to uh, break the policies because they got in so much trouble at the beginning of the year. So actually yeah. go and look at it. Uh, look at every single policy, you know, and when they flag one of your ads, you know, make sure to actually talk to them and figure out before you start running again, you know, because a lot of people are getting uh, this plug. So just follow the Facebook policies and uh, the formatting, you know, length and the formatting, and don't use too much text. You know, I know it's just Facebook telling you, oh, you're using too much text and we don't believe it, but it's true. You know, the more text we use, uh, people are, you get less conversions. <laughs> Yeah, and I think especially in this day and age, it takes a lot of effort to read things sometimes if it's not being told to you or shown to you. So I guess that's um, a mistake people do make. And that's in the Facebook policies, isn't it, when they say you can't yeah. just put too much text in. So I guess that helps you as well if you do stick to those things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, for someone coming in, I've got a question here. Someone coming in, they want to start an ad for the first time. What's a realistic expectation for someone's first ad? Okay, <clears throat> so for that... It really depends on the industry, right? Uh, again, uh, and your industry and your audience, because if, if you have a smaller audience, let's say you're a local business, your ads are going to be more expensive, you know, because you just want to target people in your, uh, you know, locally. But the broader, you know, if, it, if you have like a broad audience, uh, it should be like less than, you know, I've never had anything over 70 cents per result, you know, per link click. Okay. So, so like that. Uh, for local ones, it might even go sometimes to like one one fifty. But yeah, uh, I think that those should be the expectations. But it, it really depends on your audience. You know, the bigger your audience, uh, you know, the cheaper it's gonna be. Too. Yeah. Okay. So just try and find as many people to try and target before really specifying getting down to that. Yeah. Exactly. But also don't make it way too broad because then you're gonna end up attracting people that are not really interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there is like a sweet spot there. So yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah, you, you need that balance. In there. <laughs> um, and so I think you see a lot of really good ads on Instagram at the moment. Is there anything that you look <coughs> at in these good ads as inspiration or should the students try and just start from the beginning and work on this themselves? Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely what, what I tell my clients and students. Uh, always replicate success. You, know, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, pretty much go and see what's working and how can you do this? Uh, normally, I, I tell my, my students or my clients to do it uh, competitor or influencer research, right? So you, you do your whole competitor research on Instagram, you know who's your competitor, who you want to actually, you know, model and kind of like copy, mm -hmm. epic copy. And then you can go to their Facebook page, you know, and now Facebook actually allows you to uh, see the ads of your competition. I don't know if you knew that. So no, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah. So, so basically, you know, let's say, your competitor is Gary Vee, you know, for example. You know, my competitor is Gary Vee. So you go on Gary Vee Facebook page, and then you go on, on the tab on the left, and then you scroll down to info and ads, and you can see every single app that Gary Vee is running. You know? So that's what I've been doing. I actually go to my competitors. I look at uh, what, what kind of ads they're running, and I get ideas, and I kind of try to replicate what they're doing. Yeah, and I think that is something we really try and teach in our course as well is that sometimes these companies are like funneling millions of dollars into online Instagram advertising and you can actually kind of jump onto the back of that and piggyback on all that success by just analyzing what they're doing. You don't have to spend all the millions of dollars. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's like you're completely right. And, and not even like big companies that are spending millions of dollars, even if you are a, a local business, you know, uh, I don't know, a hair salon and you're seeing other hair salon that has a big Instagram page and you're like, I don't know what they're doing. What are they doing so well? So you can just go and actually see what kind of ads they're running, you know, and then you get an idea and kind of replicate that. You know? so, yeah. yeah. So they don't need to spend millions. It's just like someone that's finding success, just go and like copy it. Ethically, obviously. You know? <laughs> yeah, ethically. Modeling, like say, modeling. Completely no, plagiarized, but have a look at the strategies they're using it and see what, what it is that's actually working. Yeah, yeah exactly. If you just rerun run someone's ads and it's got their street address on it still, like it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna be too successful. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna work. <laughs> Nothing. Um, okay, so just finishing up the interview here, what is like the main takeaway that you would 
like our students to take when it comes to running ads. It is really daunting, but I think talking to you is a good way to kind of break it apart. But if there's like one bit of advice you want to leave here, what, what is it you'd suggest? Uh, I guess go for story ads at the moment. You know, I, I really think that it's an un underutilized tool. No, like uh, not many people are using story ads specifically. You know, they're focusing a lot on, you know, Facebook ads and doing feed ads because mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of like use the same one for feed ad and Facebook ad and they're leaving alone, you know, they're, they're not really going into the story ads. So, and that's not going to last too long. So that's why you should do it now because jump you it now. get in jump on it now. Yeah. Start with the story ads. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you so much for talking to us. So we'll have a downloadable PDF in this lecture. So you can just click on that and you can get all the information on Marco here and some links to some of the things we've spoken about. So thank you so much. It's really great to speak to you. I think you've been really helpful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.